okay guys so in this video we'll be talking about the urinary tract infections okay now uh, the most common agents for the urinary tract infections are escherichia coli now you may probably wonder that escherichia coli uh, is a, a normal patho normal microflora of human body right and in fact in all the kind of urinary tract infections that we will be talking about in all the organisms that are causing this kind of infections we are going to see that all of them in fact most of them are the part of our normal microflora and all of them are opportunistic pathogen that means in normal situations in normal time in general time they won't cause any kind of disease they won't cause any kind of infection but they can cause infection if they get their environment onto their favor that's the actual part of the uh, opportunistic pathogen right so if i draw this uh, statistic uh, statistical line again so what it is suggesting us that let's say this is the line and in this case what we are going to find that approximately percentage of the disease if i put the percentage of the occurrence of the disease so let us put this percentage occurrence let's say here begins with zero here it is a 10 then 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60, and so on. It's going on like this. Let, let us extend it a little bit. Extend it. And let's say 50, 10, 20. So let me write 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. This is 60, this is 70, and so on. This is going on like that. If this is the case, this is 80. If, if this is the case, and that's how it's going on, in this case, uh, what we are going to find that the most of the infection, in fact, the maximum infection is caused due to Escherichia coli. So Escherichia will be somewhat like that. This is by E. coli infections. So maximum urinary tract infections. It is also called as UTI. That means urinary tract infection, right? It's maximum caused by the Escherichia coli. Then it is a second member for causing this kind of condition is Staphylococcus saprophyticus. So let me put it here. Staphylococcus saprophyticus. It is very, very rare as you can see. Staphylococcus saprophyticus. Okay. This is the second member for causing this disease. Now the third member for causing this disease is Klebsiella. So let me write it here. Klebsiella. Here we go, Klebsiella and Proteus and all this enteric bacteria. Klebsiella is, is there, Proteus is there. So these are, so these are, this is Klebsiella and this is Proteus. So majorly we can list these four different types. One is E. coli, the highest uh, one. And then uh, st Staphylococcus saprophyticus, then Klebsiella and Proteus. So this total enteric zone or enteric type of bacteria. Now let us talk about first about the E. coli. Now we know that E. coli it can also cause any kind of gastrointestinal diseases. But it is a major causative agent for urinary tract infections. Now why? Because this E. coli, and in fact all of them, this E. coli, uh, st Staphylococcus saprophyticus, and all of them, these organisms are a kind of normal microflora. For example, this E. coli is a normal microflora of our gut. We all know that. Now Staphylococcus saprophyticus is a microflora of normal microflora of vagina. So let me write, I, we haven't talked about it before. So it's a normal microflora of vagina. We also we can find all the time there. And Klebsiella and Proteus, all of them, this, both of them are enterobacteria type. Enterobacteria. Enterobacteria type. Okay. These are enterobacteria type. And and so let's first talk about this E. coli. So we know that E. coli uh, can, ca can cause two major infections regarding this urinary tract point. Two major infections. The first one is uh, cystitis. Cystitis, which is predominantly seen in female. Cystitis. And second thing it can also cause is, uh, which is a kind of major, which is a kind of more severe kind of condition. And that is caused by non uh, uropathogenic kind of E. coli and this is known as a obstructed urinary flow or pylo sorry pylonephritis okay 
so all of them now whenever we are talking about urinary tract infection that means we are talking about the total urinary lining or urinary tract that can contain all these things that is coming in inside there right now obviously uh, some genital regions regions are also part of that right so first one is the cystitis which is predominantly seen in females so let me write it is seen only in females but pyelonephritis which is also uh, very much common in female but very rare in uh, male okay so most of these infections that we are going to see in fact all uh, most of the urinary tract infections are distant towards female that's another important point right? most of them in fact okay uh, so there are two different type of E. coli that can cause this kind of mm, situations. One is E. coli is called the patho uropathogenic E. coli. Another one is called the non uropathogenic. So let me write one is uropathogenic uropathogenic E. coli. Another one is non uropathogenic E. coli. Okay, so first one or uropathogenic E. coli is a causative agent for cystitis, and second one or non uropathogenic E. coli is a causative agent for pyelonephritis, right? Pyelonephritis is a much more compromised condition than cystitis. Cystitis is pretty common in young women. Okay, now let's talk about the second one, which is the Staphylococcus saprophyticus. Now we know that Staphylococcus is a gram uh, positive coccus, we all know that. It's a frequent cause of the cystitis in women again. And it's a very very frequent cause for that and it is probably related to this occurrence as the part of the normal vaginal flora we have already seen that important fact and uh, it is also important that this kind of infections are most of the time hospital born or hospital acquired in fact most of the urinary tract infections are of hospital origin so let me write uh, most of them most of them are of are nosocomial type nosocomial type now nosocomial means hospital acquired infections in fact most of this urinary tract infection are of that type now especially this uh, the infection caused by staphylococcus saprophyticus now catheterization is a kind of dangerous thing in hospitals which will provide you more with urinary tract infections so catheterization catheterization is a major causative agent for that so it's very very dangerous so let me put dangerous here right in many aspects now this catheterization uh, is a prime feature for transferring those uh, kind of hospital acquired uh, disease causing agents like staphylococcus saprophyticus clepsial proteus and all these things from catheter to the healthy individual right so that can be a reason for this kind of diseases right so let's move on to the third kind which is uh, the diseases caused by enterobacteria now the diseases caused by enterobacteria is klebsiella uh, and proteus also there is another uh, member seracea so all of them klebsiella or uh, proteus or seracea all of them are a part of our uh, what we know the enterobacterial group and they can cause uh, infections right and how will they cause infections uh, that again in all of them most of the cases the reason for causing the infection is due to a kind of hospital uh, or due to catheterization most of the case due to most of the case catheterization right so in in, in this case uh, and, and this this whole enterobacteria type of microorganisms they are having another important capability of producing so let me talk about it of producing entero enterotoxin remember they can produce enterotoxin or a kind of exotoxin right exotoxin now this exotoxin will damage our in, uh, what you can say urinary tract lining and finally it will cause a severe conditions there so, okay and in fact all of the most of this kind of urinary tract problems are resulted in a kind of complaint and the complaint is dysuria so let me write what are the complaints the complaints usually in all this case it usually complains in dysuria so let us take here dysuria it results in limber pain uh, sorry sorry no, lumbar pain lumbar pain and and also fever is always there fever and chill is always there so fever and chill is always there so these are the kind of complaints that are 
uh, seen most of the cases due to this urinary tract infections and the reason for that we have already talked about too now let us talk about uh, this this kind of third uh, kind which is uh, which is not written here actually it is also can be caused by pseudomonas aeruginosa kind of strain so let me write it here i forgot to mention here this is also slightly uh, slightly it is can also be caused by pseudomonas aeruginosa so this this last thing we change the color this last thing, this one, is the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So let me circle this part out, right? So Pseudomonas aeruginosa can be a cause of this kind of diseases, right? And again, Pseudomonas aeruginosa is a opportunistic pathogen, and uh, it is a major cause of hospital acquired uh, urinary tract infections, right? And how? Because this, remember, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So Pseudomonas aeruginosa we have already talked about them the serogenous aeruginosa can be present in surgical instruments or equipments or for example say uh, it can be present in some surgical uh, components like say pacemaker or some artificial organ uh, during this study so all these artificial organs and surgical equipments all these things can cause the pseudomonas aeruginosa now if they are having the pseudomonas aeruginosa with them then the transfer of the pseudomonas aeruginosa from those instruments to uh, the human being via, so let's say via bloodstream or via any kind of cut because in surgery what we are doing, we are cutting, uh, open the tissue and then uh, size, and then joining them it back and all these things going on, right? So in, in any aspect, if there is uh, the touch of this or uh, attachment of this kind of microorganism with bloodstream or via bloodstream, it will can it can move to tissues. Right, it will move to tissues, and whenever it moves to tissues, it colonizes there, start to infect it more and more, and it finally set up in, into a disease. Right, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa kind of poisoning is kind of dangerous for the urinary tract infections because uh, this Pseudomonas aeruginosa is having a glycocalyx layer, so glycocalyx capsule, glycocalyx capsule is there. Now, as a result of the presence of this glycocalyx capsule, they are a kind of uh, immune cell or they are a kind of anti, they are getting a kind of anti-phagocytic activity. So, as a result, our normal uh, system uh, is unable to recognize them and kill them by phagocytic methods and all these things. Okay. But still, we can uh, take uh, care of all these kind of infections by using antibiotics. Antibiotics are the major things for this kind of infections because this kind of infections are mostly not self-limiting and they are systemic type. So let me write that make them dangerous because most of these uh, infections are of systemic, systemic, sorry, systemic type. Now as they are kind of systemic infection, that means they will, they are going to stay for a longer period of time, right? So we need to treat them as quick as possible and they are of medical emergency like cystitis cystitis it can cause and it can be there for many years uh, for women right now the cystitis is called uncomplicated sometimes now in this case uh, three day, days of therapy is sufficient for for those kind of uncomplicated cystitis but for the complicated type of cystitis it, it will require many more days to cure it right and usually if it is un, uncomplicated so let me write here here uncomplicated uncomplicated cystitis now, if it is uncomplicated one in those case three days maximum three days treatment using ciprofloxacin so let me write ciprofloxacin using ciprofloxacin which is a part of fluoroquinolones and also you can use trimethoprim trimethoprim to cure this kind of infections this is the first kind of thing okay and and also if it is a complicated kind which is a pyelonephritis so let me write the second one which is which can be the complicated type or pyelonephritis pyelonephritis sorry nephritis if this is the case then in this case it can be complicated so let me write complicated okay so kind of complicated now for this kind of complicated pyelonephritis situations it will require 10 to 14 15 days to finally cure this kind of uh, disease right still we what we can use here is uh, amoxicillin let me write amoxicillin 
amoxicillin which is a part of penicillin or, or, or a member of penicillin group also we can use ciprofloxacin ciprofloxacin and also we can use trimethoprim so so trimethoprim so in most of these infections remember what we can use because we are going against E. coli you can use amoxicillin ciprofloxacin trimethoprim but remember one thing that in most of this infection many in fact many of these infections that are being characterized with this kind of GI tract infections like say the infections by this uh, staphylococcus saprophyticus or E. coli enterobacteria kind of infections in more many of them are very much antibiotic uh, resistant in most of the case because this kind of infections are very common so they can acquire this antibiotic resistant pretty fast so we need to be very careful about the administering antibiotics whatever antibiotics we are providing and should take the antibiotics uh, as directed and should complete the course of antibiotic otherwise the antibiotic resistance is going to make ourselves difficult to fight against this kind of infections okay so that's a summary about the uti and i hope that's helpful thank you